गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर फाइन बेटा टुडे वी विल स्टार्ट चैप्टर थ्री ऑफ सिविक्स बुक एंड नेम ऑफ द चैप्टर इज इलेक्टोरल पॉलिटिक्स बेटा इन दिस चैप्टर वी विल रीड अबाउट द प्रोसीजर ऑफ इलेक्शन दैट व्हाट ऑल प्रोसेस आर डन इन द इलेक्शन एंड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल डिस्कस दिस टॉपिक लाइक वी नो इन चैप्टर टू ऑल्सो Uh, that we read about that it is not possible for the people to govern directly that is why the representatives are elected and the most common form of democracy is indirect democracy so in this chapter we will uh, study that how these representatives are elected and the first topic we will begin that why elections are necessary and useful in a dem democracy and then we will try to understand how electoral competition among parties serves the people with that in other chapter we will uh, study about the constituencies nomination of the candidates the election campaign polling and the counting of votes so all these topic we uh, we will discuss in this lecture now see the first topic is why elections beta in this particular topic the example is given of our state haryana at that time beta uh, an expectant crowd sitting for the past 5 hours in a chowk of the towns waiting for its leader to come and uh, the organizer is sure and reassure the crowd that he would be here any moment so beta at that time the leader mr devilal chief of the haryana sangharsh samiti who was to address a meeting in karnal the 76 year old leader is a very busy man and he had already addressed nine election meetings and then he was also preparing for this election so this way beta one story is given to you one incident is given to you that why elections are necessary so beta this was uh, the this is given so beta this is the extract from the newspaper so and this newspaper report is about the state assembly election in haryana in 1987 and the state had been ruled by a congress party led government since 1982 choudhry devilal then an opposition leader led a movement called nyay yudh nyay yudh beta it is it means the struggle for justice and he formed a new party lokdal his party joined other opposition parties to form a front against the congress in the elections and in the election campaign devilal said that if his party won the election his government would waive the loans of farmers as you know so many promises are done that is also part of that is known as the election manifesto and he promised that this would be the first section of his government to waive the loans of farmers as well as of the small businessmen as at that time the people were unhappy with the existing government they were also attracted by devilal's promise so when elections were held they voted in favor of lokdal and its allies and lokdal and its partners won 76 seats as you know in haryana vidhan sabha there are 90 seats and out of that 76 seats were won by lokdal so it declared a clear majority in the assembly and the congress could win only 5 seats and once the election results were announced the sitting chief minister resigned and the newly elected members of legislative assembly of lokdal choose devilal as their leader and the governor invited devilal to be the new chief minister as we know beta after the counting of votes governor of that particular state invite the leader of majority party to form the government so 3 days after the election results were declared he became the chief minister his government issued a order waiving the outstanding loans of small farmers agriculture laborers and small businessmen as they promised in their election manifesto and his party ruled the state for 4 years 
but this time his party didn't win popular support the congress won the election and formed the government now by this incident what do we come to know like whatever promises were made by the lokdal people rely on that they voted for lokdal but later on when the next election held then again the government is formed by the congress party it means people were not satisfied by that lokdal so this way beta elections are necessary now beta the next topic is why do we need election what is the need of election election take place regularly in any democracy as we know elections are the foundation or the basic feature of a democracy like we know there are more than 100 countries in the world in which elections take place to choose people's representative we also read that elections are held in many countries that are not democratic if you remember we read about the china also we read about zimbabwe also so the question is that why do we need election so can we imagine a democracy without election a rule of the people is possible without any election if all the people can sit together every day as we know beta the most common form of democracy is the indirect democracy means all the people cannot participate to govern the country so and there is no way there is no democratic way of selecting representatives without election now what can be the other criteria if we suppose if we don't uh, held election then what can be the other criteria for the representative should we select the representative on the basis of age and experience or a place or on the basis of education and knowledge so there could be some difficulty in deciding this that who is more experienced or who is more knowledgeable but the people they can resolve this problem very easily by electing their representative through elections so to ensure that re these representatives rule as per the wishes of the people and how to make sure that those who the people don't like do not remain their representative as we have uh, read in the topic of that uh, haryana incident that people they were not satisfied with the lok dal government that is why they removed then even this election this requires a mechanism by which people can choose their representatives at regular intervals and change them if they wish to do so and this mechanism is called election therefore elections are considered essential in our times for any representative democracy because without election democracy's existence is endangered now in an election the voters make many choices now what are those choices they can choose who will make laws for them they can choose who will form the government and take major decisions they can choose the party whose policies will guide the government and law making as we know government's main feature is the law formation also so all these are the choi uh, choices now uh, this was the topic about why do we need election now the next topic is what makes an election democratic as uh, if you remember we discussed in the previous chapters also uh, that elections were held in zimbabwe also china also mexico also but people they don't have the right to vote as per their wishes it means those elections were not democratic right now what what should be the basic needs what makes an election democratic so election can be held in many ways all democratic countries hold election but also hold some kind of even the non uh, non democratic countries also hold some kind of election but how can we differentiate how can we distinguish democratic election from any other election we discussed many examples of countries where elections are held but they can't really be called democratic elections so 
uh, we will just learn the this and start with the simple list of the minimum conditions of a democratic election it means now uh, we will discuss the basic condition of a democratic election if if these conditions are fulfilled we can call the election a democratic election first is everyone should be able to choose this means that everyone should have one vote and every vote should have equal value it means universal adult franchising now the second condition is there should be something to choose from parties and candidates should be free to contest election and should offer some real choice to the voters means there should not be one party system there should be multiple party system and every individual whosoever is eligible according to the constitution of india that person should be eligible to contest election and the third condition is the choice should be offered at regular intervals like in our country elections are held after every 5 years so election must be held regularly after every few years the next condition is the candidate preferred by the people should get elected and the last one election should be conducted in a free and fair manner where people can choose as they really wish so this might look like very simple and easy conditions but there are many countries where these are not fulfilled even in our neighboring country pakistan also so in this chapter we will apply these conditions to the elections held in our own country to see if we can call these democratic elections or not so beta this was the topic for today like i have told you earlier that in this topic we will uh, read about the procedure of election how a government is formed right and hope all of you have understood the topic thank you and have a nice day